coming. Um, I'm so used to saying this morning, so excuse me if I say good morning or thanks for joining us this morning, but thanks for coming out this evening and being a part of this. So, yeah, thank you, students, for coming out. We know that it's a busy time for you all. We know that midterms are going on. Um, so thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules. We're very happy to have you here today. Okay, so today I'm going to serve as the moderator. I have seven questions that I'm going to ask Taina and Jay, and I will ask one person first, and I'll let the other person respond, and then we'll move on. Who would like to go first? Oh, no, Taina, ladies first. Ladies first. Yeah, ladies first. Okay, we'll let Taina go first. The first question is, what is your personal brand, and is it important to success? Ooh, okay. Um, this is something that I've taken a long time to work at. My personal brand, I would say, is um, I am a mother, a children's advocate, and a reporter out to get the real truth of stories. Um, I like to be in-depth, and I like to get uh, to know the community and be really involved with the community. And what was the second part of that question? The second part is... And how is it important to success? How is your personal brand important to success? I think branding yourself, you know, overall is going to be, you know, if people don't know what a brand is, brand is just how you define yourself. So if you don't know how to define yourself, <coughs> how can you succeed in life? I think those two tie really close together. So once you find what you're good at, what you're going to succeed at, that kind of goes hand in hand with the, both of them. Jay, um, my, my brand is I'm a digital storyteller. Um, I help you know, companies and individuals build online brands and communities. Um, and the second one was what? How does it, how how has it, yeah, how does it lead to success? Um, I, I mean, I think personal brand, uh, you know, having a personal brand is very uh, important to success because you know, I think part of having a personal brand is really just being good at something and then you know dominating it and so career-wise um, I think if you if people know you for something um, and they know that you're good at it it's it's uh, easier to succeed and then you you become known for that um, it's easier to, to kind of find the one thing that you're good at and, and really you know move forward with that you'll find that people find you know come to you as a resource and uh, you'll be known in your industry okay so consistency is a part of that. oh consistency majorly. Yeah. okay yeah. great Right, so number two, how do you define personal branding, and can you share some examples of strong personal brands? Okay, well, here is an example that if anyone's paying close attention to the debates, um, let's see, Candy Crowley, she's the moderator for tonight, and I think she's a perfect example for a personal brand. If anyone knows Candy, she's a CNN reporter, correspondent, and she immediately said, you know, I'm not going to just be a person to say time or 30 seconds. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to make them be responsible to the questions that are asked, and she's going to ask follow-up questions. Why? Because she is a hard, you know, awesome reporter, and she wants the truth. She digs for it, and she makes sure that people are accountable for the answers that they give to any questions asked. I think she has a great personal brand, and I think that she is an example of how her brand, she's not going to let herself just become, you know, a timekeeper for something as big as the presidential debate. Um, on a company level, I think some really good examples of branding are products like Coca-Cola. They've had the same, you know, brand, you know, look for forever. You see a can of Coke, you know what it tastes like, and you expect nothing more, nothing less. Another example would be Johnson & Johnson. They're known for being gentle, smelling good, and often associated with babies. You know, if you just think about their baby products, I just think that, you know, as a mom, I know that if I see a line of things, I'm easily going to grab that Johnson & Johnson. I trust Johnson & Johnson. They've told me that they're honest, and they've been in, you know, around for a long time. So they have a dependable brand. Okay, good. That's a very good example. Well, let's say again, define the personal branding. It says, how do you define personal branding and, and share some examples of strong okay. personal branding? Um, I think personal branding is uh, is uh, developing an emotional connection, you know, with the product or an individual. And so one of the things that you have to understand and, and, and create is what is your brand promise, meaning what is it you, what is it that you promise to deliver to people? Um, so one of the things I do is I tweet and I write and um, about using the digital tools that I uh, use on a daily basis. I share with people, you know, my journey, you know, my successes and um, mistakes and things that I've learned along the way. And so when people are following you, um, for example, online, the question is, what are you delivering to them? 
I think oftentimes people think about, you know, what's in it for them and they don't think about the user. Um, I think one of the things that's part of a personal brand is making sure um, that you develop a network before you need the network. That's one of the things that's really huge. So you should have a network um, of people that you uh, have a relationship with, whether it's in real life or online or both. And so um, I think that's what personal branding is. It's um, basically it's who you are, for real. And I think you have to figure out for you, I, I know for me, and I, I'm sure Diana can speak to this, it's been a journey for me to figure out what is it that I exactly want to do because most people are talented at a lot of things. So you have to figure out what are the narrow things that I want to focus on. Um, moving on to great examples, I think uh, someone who I think has a personally strong brand is Mario Armstrong. Is anyone familiar with him? He's a digital lifestyle expert. He's on CNN. He's on Headline News. He has a serious radio show. Um, and I think your brand is not necessarily are you known to everybody in the world. I'm just giving a perf uh, an example. I think his background is he was director of technology for the city of Baltimore. And so now what he does is, like for example, he talks about all the great tools and technologies that are out there and gives people, you know, basically a bite-sized feed of all the, the, the things that are coming out. Like today, he was tweeting about the iPad mini, right? And so I haven't had time to really take it out. So I kind of, I follow him, you know, and I retweeted his tweet and sent a comment back to him. And uh, people know when they follow him that they'll get that kind of information. He has one point five million followers on social cam. I mean, so he's someone who is a strong brand. He's an entrepreneur. He helps companies with this. Um, and I think one of the things that he's just really been excellent at is really finding his niche. He's, he's like I said, he's an entrepreneur. He's on these shows. He has a serious radio show. Um, and I think that's really success. Okay. So when you're creating your own personal brand, not only does it involve uh, the type of information that you disseminate, it also involves attitude, maybe the style of dress, um, just certain things that, that would go into it. Can y'all describe some of those things? Because some people, when they think of branding, they just think of maybe a logo, but that's not all that goes into branding. It's not. I would say it's as students and as a professional, you know, when I was in college just a few years ago, you know, I made it known that um, when I had my TV classes or when I had my English or writing classes that I went there with the motto of, I'm going to walk out of this university one day as an anchor. No, that's my job, and I'm going to school for this. And I was really driven because I had my brand. I knew what I wanted to stand for and what I felt I was good at. So, you know, if I walked in, let's say, um, with my hair in a ponytail and sweatpants on, my teachers were immediately like, are you sick? What's wrong? You know, like, are you, are you feeling okay today? Um, and it's just because that was not me. That wasn't my brand. That's not who I was representing every other day in their classroom. And so they could see that just my appearance, just the way I was holding myself, meant something. I always sit up, um, even when I'm not supposed to sit up. And that's because I think it just shows that I'm assertive and I'm, you know, giving someone my full attention and that I'm engaged in, in the conversation I'm having. So I think that shows something that I just do automatically. It's something that I've just trained in my brain to show someone, I'm here to give you all of my attention. And I'm not, you know, slouching in my chair like, how's it going? You know, I'm just sitting up and assertive. So I think that shows for me uh, personally how branding helps. Okay. Yeah. So it's your dress, you're very classy in your appearance and right. also in, in the way you sit. So was right. that something that your parents taught you? Did you have to walk with a book on your head? No, as, I think my mom adult? just told me, like, she probably hit me a few times and was like, sit up straight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, just being honest, I mean, that's why, like, you know, she just kind of instilled uh, that in me. And um, dressing, you know, watching news people and watching just how they carry themselves, you don't want something busy, like your red dress would be perfect. It's a solid color, mm -hmm. something that has a nice neckline to leave viewers up to your face. You don't want anything distracting. You don't want any big flowers all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, nice and clean lines. So I try to think that way now when I go out and okay. go shop. Good, very good. How about you, um, I think, you know, your dress is just a manifestation of your brand. It's not mm -hmm. the brand, you know. Um, it's just the painting on the wall. And so you are the brand. You are your person. So, you know, I think it's about, again, figuring out what you're good at. Um, you know, one of the things that I, obviously, my focus is new media. So that means I read, consume, and, you know, when people come to me at the station, they know if they have a question, who to go to. That's my brand. I am the guy. I am your guy when you have new media questions. So then everything from that is just an extension of that. So, like, your clothes, for me, I really, you know, I personally just try to stick with, 
the basic colors and really have a clean, defined look, but um, uh, but not overly dressy. Because, like for example, when you speak to groups, sometimes it's intimidating if you have a you know eight hundred dollar suit on, and you know you're speaking to a group of business people who you know maybe run a store and they maybe run a dry cleaners and they work hard every day and they don't they're not able to wear an eight hundred dollar suit. That's not eight hundred dollar suit. And so, <laughs> I'm gonna so up your website. Uh, so I think it's that, and then everything about it is just really um, paying attention to all the details about your brand and spending as much time as companies spend. Um, for example, our station, we everything that goes out, we've thought about. The look, the feel, the color. What is it that you want people to feel? What emotion? Because we talked about that emotional connection with you. Um, and so, again, I think the real part of your brand is your knowledge and what, what you have to give people. So I would say my advice to you would be to figure out what it is you want to be. If you want to be a PR publicist, you know, no, you know, that's what I would focus on, which are the, I would write, tweet, blog about the journey and being a publicist and being, you know, in, a, in that process and things that you're learning and um, follow other people who are doing this on Twitter and kind of get your group. Because, you know, the internet is just a way for you to find your tribe. So find your tribe and communicate. And speaking of Twitter, if you go to someone like, for example, AC360, you know, all these different people, that 140 characters or less is nine times out of ten their brand, what they stand to represent. So if you're having problems, you know, find that person, like Jay said, that you would like to be, that you admire, that you, you know, respect and look up to and see how they, what their brand is and see, you know, kind of, wow, I wouldn't guess putting it like that. Um, mine is really short and sweet. I think I'm um, an anchor, a food lover, but I don't cook, a mother, <laughs> goofy, and a, um, I think like new to Central Texas. You know, and that's me. I'm a goofy and sporadic, but I okay. you know, hold my own. Well, I was kind of quiet because I was pulling up um, Jay's website. However, our compat compatibility view won't allow us to. I pulled up your um, about branding um, because one thing that I noticed about Jay's Facebook page is that he will only post professional photos. Um, that you won't, you know, usually on people's Facebook pages, you'll see pictures taken by a cell phone that are fuzzy or shadowy. Uh, but Jay Don't is go to very mine. particular. We're going to pull yours up next. Um, but and then usually most of his pictures deal with sports. You know, that's, that's a part of his brand. I don't know if you all know, but he ran track for Baylor when he was in school here. Um, and he has a, a, very, a, a blog that's very well known where he focuses on track. So sports, that's part of his brand. Um, and then, of course, he has the, the new media. Which is also which is, so his, his brand is two-pronged. You have the sports aspect of it, and then you also have the new media aspect. So I think he does a great job of carrying out his brand. That was one of the reasons we asked him to serve on the panel. Did you want to add anything about that? Or? Um, no, I, and I think it's like I said, just understanding that your brand is who you are. So it's the things that you say online, it's the things that you do in, pub in public. And so, you know, one of the things I think there's a natural tendency to want to do is try to kind of like corporations maybe, um, is be homogenous, meaning that you don't really want to have anything that sticks out in the crowd. And I would say the other way. I would say become extremely passionate about something um, that you care for. And so one of the things I always tell people is, you know, like people say follow your passion. And mm -hmm. I say follow your work. And, and the reason why I say that is, is you need to focus on what you enjoy working at. Because then once you work at it, you'll become good at it. And then once you become good at it, people can't ignore you. And then after they can't ignore you, you'll have to be passionate about it because you spent so much time working on it. And so sometimes one of the things that like people say this passion thing is I've also watched people job hop and I've seen them the stress of this idea of maybe their ideas they watch, uh, you know, Restaurant Impossible and their dream is to run a, a restaurant. I'm not saying don't be passionate about what you're doing. What I'm saying is go work at it and go find out what you want to do and then pursue that. Because that's because otherwise, what you could maybe find yourself in is, is is chasing this elusive thing that's this dream of if I had that job, my life would be perfect. And so, um, like I had an in, like one of the people that I interned uh, for me said like this is a dream job. How did you get it? And I was like, you know, they they don't create jobs, dream jobs. You make dream jobs. Right. And so that's what happened. I kind of took the position that I had and ran with it. I mean, no one told me I could take over social media. I just took over social media, and then they asked me about it later. You know what I mean? So that's what I say for your careers is, you know, as your students, there's this thing called Google. And, you know, you own your education. 
So what I would do is hone your skills. I would work day and night to be good at whatever it is that you want to do um, and focus on that. Okay. Okay, um, so now I've pulled up Tyena's page, and what do you all remember? When she described her brand, what do you all remember about what she said? What were some of the characteristics? Mother. Mother. And so does her Facebook page say mother? Yes. So, good. Oh, check, good. check there. Check. It says mother. Check. <laughs> what else did she say? Do you all remember? Goofy. 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 I can okay. attest to that. She's funny. She's, <laughs> no, she's funny. She's funny. She's very down to earth, and I think that comes through. My Twitter, I think, maybe reflects my brand a little bit more. It's recently my boyfriend's birthday, so it's... A lot of birthday photos. A lot of birthday photos. Because it says and then mother. I was out because I was took some days off to go celebrate with him. But, <laughs> I mean, that's another goofy picture, you know, just something that I sporadically thought of doing was to, um, you know, and then if you go down... If you go up just a little bit, there's a book section, and I don't know if this here, is, yes. here, African American. Did anyone know that there was an African American book section in Walmart? I oh. did. Neither did I. I did. And I when did. I saw that, I just thought that this people should see that this is there. I don't think it should be a section. I think I'll, everything should just be like you know, romance. Um, funny, sports, whatnot, autobiographies. So that's something that I think maybe shows the reporter side of me that I'm always wondering, even when I'm out, you know, I'm curious to know why something like that exists. Um, Good, so, that's the reporter in you. Yeah, you that is the reporter in like, what is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and last night I tweeted, yeah, last night I tweeted, uh, is fish still good if it's brown after it, def you know, you defrost it? So obviously I'm not a cook, I always ask questions. So. Good, so you're not trying to protect Pretend to be something that you're Oh, not, no. So. I'm definitely not. And that's the other thing with Brandon. You don't want to come across as phony. Right. That's very Okay, important. great. Yeah. All right. So Authent authenticity. Authenticity. That's the key. That's, that's the key. Great. All right. So the next question you guys have already addressed somewhat, but you might want <coughs> to add something to it. Why do you think students should build a strong personal brand? Well, I think that you guys are getting ready to go, or you might already be in a field, you might already be working, but like I said, when you leave here, you should have that mentality of the job that you know you want to pursue. So, you know, in the activities that you're involved in on campus, you know, not that you don't want to be part of, you know, the Pet Lovers Club, but if you, you know, want to go and do, a, let's just say, tax journey, you know, like I wouldn't necessarily put the two together um, on your resume. So you want to reflect what you are. Um, in school, I was obviously, I started the TV station. I was the anchor of the TV station. I was in the school newspaper. And all of those things helped me. They, I could put them on my resume and someone would think that they all went together. You know, you don't want to be sporadic. And people want to see that you're focused and you're driven. Because there are 1,500 other people exactly like you that are cookie cutters. And it just takes, you know, the focus, the drive, the consistency for them to realize you have what it takes and the one step above everyone else. Um, and I think that goes for anything you do in school, including the writings that you put out. Okay, great, and that's particularly important nowadays with blogs and oh, yeah. people are able to disseminate messages without a gatekeeper. So that's something that we address in our courses, the importance of <coughs> if you have a, a Christian blog, then you shouldn't be on Facebook, you know, drunk or, you know, so the two need to go together. You need right. to have that same, um, brand throughout. What's the question? The question was how can students, or why is it important for students to brand themselves? <clears throat> um, I think it's just really important to dig your well before you need water. Um, if you think about that, um, that's what your personal brand is. Again, it gets back to being good and executing. So, for example, if you're going to be a PR you know, student, if you're going to be a journalist, it's really excelling you know, on grammar, writing, and AP style. So, again, if you get back to those things and you focus on it, and like Dr. Moody said, if you're writing about it, if you're blogging about it, then you'll have a natural network. And I think, um, you know, a recent statistic I saw was 80% of jobs are found, you know, through people that they know, through your network, basically. So, you know, if you build that network through your brand and, and develop that, I think you'll find it much easier to make transitions in life. Um, I, for example, um, when I was, I kind of went to what I call the dark side. I was in corporate marketing. And so, and it was, it was a good job, I got to tell you. I mean, the fun stories, you know, I was in Vegas, um, 
working for a bank and and it was things were so great one day we went for training so we were like you know what let's just we flew over to san diego for a training at a golf course overlooking you know one of the top golf courses in america and then we had lunch and we got to go out and walk on the course for a little bit we're back for training and you know they picked us up in one of those nice coach you know uh, vans that they have look like kind of limos but they're buses and then we went <coughs> back to Vegas the same night and kind of you know jet set it back and it was fun um, but one of the things that happens I started blogging um, like Dr. Moody said and I started you know telling these stories and you know um, had a lot of success really quickly um, I interviewed somebody that you probably know by the name of Lolo Jones if you watch the Olympics and I was one of the first people that kind of really saw that she had this ability to really be a star on and off the track and I sent her an email and she um, and I asked her to interview her and she said great so she told this really powerful story about how she was homeless and how she slept you know in the basement of this church and so I mean this interview all of a sudden <clears throat> I released it and put it you know um, and, and shared it with a bunch of friends and emailed it and all of a sudden it went from like 800 views up to like 10,000 really quickly. And, and this was before the world knew, you know, Lolo Jones. I kind of had known her because she ran LSU. Um, and, uh, and so I kind of started fooling around with these tools and, and then went to Olympic trials. I was like, you know, I really want to get more. Like I stayed up really late learning how to code. I mean, I'd stay up till 2.30 and 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, learning some basic code and learning like, you know, just destroying things, fixing things, and then like freaking out because the page is now broken and live. And I learned my lesson. I really should have done it on a test server and shouldn't have done it. Um, and then when I wanted to go to school and I kind of wanted to get back into media, I, I, I kind of knew I wanted to do the job I had. I, so what happened is I developed these relationships while I was around the country working at track meets. And then when I wanted to get into TV, it was an easy transition because I went back to my network. I went to the people that I knew, so and then they vouched for me. So when this TV station called, they say, yeah, I mean, I've I worked with this guy. He knows what he's doing. You'd be lucky to have him. And so then people say, okay, well, let me give him a shot. So um, I, I don't think my story's that uncommon, I, and I think that you can do the same thing. So that's why I think it's important. And he left out an important part. He also went back and got certificate, certified in yeah. HTML. Yeah. So he knew that although he could already code websites, he needed the credentials to right. go behind it. And he was willing to take that extra step. Yeah, so because I think that's important. Yeah, just because I understood that, like, when you're dealing with big companies, they understand, like, it's so it's an emerging field, and they understand degrees, they understand certifications. I mean, if you just tell them, like, look, I, I just interviewed somebody, and this thing went, like, off the charts. I mean, like, people don't get that. Yeah, so okay. that's why I'm Yeah, you have to have that piece of paper sometimes. And I learned a lot, too. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't just a, Okay. All right, let's move on. Great. Those are great answers. Um, number five, how is a personal brand different from a corporate brand? Well, I would say, kind of just back to the first question, uh, personal brand is something that you want to sell yourself, in a sense, to a company. You want these people to know, you know, the, the product is you. You are the product. Um, what you can do, what you can offer these people, you know, what your services are. If you are an excellent writer, if you are a techie, if you know how to, you know, um, drum up an entire marketing campaign, you need to tell them very easily, this is what I'm capable of doing. Here are the examples of one, two, and three, and my price. This is what I'm, this is my value to you. This is what I can bring into you as your company. Whereas a company is trying to sell itself to the people. It's, to me, it goes back and forth. I think the companies are trying to say, we are dependable. You can trust us. We're known for this, this, and this. And that's why we belong in your shopping cart. That's why we belong with you every day in your life. Uh, so I think that personally, we're trying to sell ourselves to companies or to employers, to um, different people in our network, and companies are trying to do that to us. Okay, good. I mean, I, just to piggyback, I think she'd really you know, hit that out the park. Mm -hmm. I think just the, you know, the main things about being a personal brand is just to really be authentic. Companies, you know, tend to be more, you know, like staying out of the fray, whereas I think personally you can, you can actually, um, you can actually be more authentic. Like, um, like for example, um, getting back to Lolo Jones during the Olympics, um, like some of her teammates, I don't know if you followed this or not, kind of were hating on her basically because she has a lot of success off the track so I went on a rant I know her but I just I, I'm all, but I'm transparent about that because one of the things on my Twitter if you follow me I say who I am so people know 
who I am. So I went on a rant because I, I thought it was completely ridiculous that, that you kind of hate on somebody for being good at what they do. And, and so basically people from around the world like started commenting back and forth. And, and so all of a sudden we had this huge conversation and some people didn't like it and some people did. But, you know, one of the things like I'm passionate about track and I just told people, I mean, we need more Lolo Joneses for the sport. And, and so she's a good communicator. She's great at storytelling. And so, you know, you talk about a personal brand. She's someone who, as opposed to I've interviewed the other two athletes who went after her, but you will do a 15-minute interview, and then the only time I heard some of that information was when they were on a show saying that I have a story too. And it's like, well, there's people like been trying to beat the story out of you. So one of the things I can say as a personal brand is to be authentic and find and, and the thing about it is you can say things, just make sure you don't offend people. And that's what's key. Um, and and the rea there is one part of the reality, and the reality of it is, is that you may say what you want, but always keep in mind there may be ramifications, and just don't forget, I told you that. But, I mean, I, don't, I, I say that to say don't, you know, don't try to be, I wouldn't try to be like this homogenous thing that you're always trying to figure out, like, what's the proper thing to say. Um, I think you have to, you'll go through this process, and I'm sure Taino will tell you, because she's a good writer, of finding your voice. That's hard. It's very difficult, and the only way you're going to figure that is you're probably going to say something. Like, I'll give you an example of a mistake that I made. One time, um, uh, there was one of the guys who was on NBC. He, he actually uh, broadcast the NBC uh, deal, and uh, I finished school not too far after he did. And so he um, it was really kind of an over-the-top entertainer, but he was really good. I mean, I think he still has the American record and uh, American college record in 100. So he was, like, going off on... Um, on a Usain Bolt for, you know, showboating and dancing and things like that. I mean, that's his brand, though. I mean, there's, like, a whole nation of people out there, and this is what I mean by being authentic, um, who, who uh, follow him. And so I was <coughs> accidentally, this was back in, like, 07, I tweeted a picture. I was tweeted that to one of my friends through direct message. Well, instead of hitting direct message, I hit broadcast, right? I've got mm -hmm. thousands of people who follow this particular account. Journalists from around the world, the USA Track and Field, the Interna International Olympic Association, and things like that. And so I was like freaking out. Like I dropped the phone. Like I was just freaking out. And so, you know, that's when I learned my lesson that you really have to be careful how you use the direct message. Um, but I mean, I guess my point is, you know, taking like the Usain Bolt personal example is that he's really, really good at what he does. No one would care that he does that lightning bolt thing if he weren't just running like ridiculously fast. And so I think that's what you have to try to find for yourself. If, you know, you should be whatever it is, maybe you, and you work for, you know, uh, you would want to work for an organization that represents airline, you know, like groups that, are, that uh, represent represent people, like labor unions or something. Pilots Fine. union. Yeah, like a pilot union. That's what I was trying to say. Maybe and there's groups like that, professional organization. That's what you want to do. I would focus on that, how to promote events. How do you promote the monthly uh, pieces that they put out, the magazines that they have, and become the experts of that. Because when you work in these jobs, people are going to say, okay, great, we've got this deal. How many likes can you give me? So, you know, I would hone that craft and just really, you know, again, focus on being good and having fun. Okay. As with, any, with anything else, there are pros and cons. Can you think of some pitfalls to trying to brand yourself? You've already discussed a couple, Jay. <coughs> can you um, some? You know, when you say authentic, you know, you want to be authentic. Um, but trust me, there are so many things I want to say that I can't. Mm -hmm. And it, I think that is probably, you know, a pitfall is that, you know, you have to know where to draw the line. And you have to be willing to accept that you can't say everything you really want to say. Um, today, here's a great example. A friend of mine got engaged. I couldn't believe this girl got engaged. <laughs> I wanted to post something about this girl <laughs> getting engaged. Uh, that would not be appropriate for me to post, though. So you, you draw the line. You realize this is something that no one who's following me cares about, number one. Number two, is it something that would really define me? No. And is it something that would be offensive? Yes. You know, um, not that I was going to name this girl or anything, but, you know, it doesn't meet the qualifications that I need to post something. So um, you have maybe different accounts, but, you know, you always have to be true. And that can sometimes, you know, true with kind of an asterisk because uh, you don't want to be some, you know, be your, 
entirely true self at times. So that can be a pitfall. Um, and was one of the pros, I guess, to online is it yes. online branding. Mm -hmm. Um, that you know, in this day and age, you can do anything. You know, you can blog, you can go on Twitter, you can go on Facebook, you can have multiple accounts, you can have um, Instagram accounts. I think Instagram is something that you know. Uh, sometimes in the beginning, I saw a lot of females using Instagram, but now a lot of guys are finding Instagram, and you know, they're just like even posting, you know, what they can make or what's going on or a car they're seeing or something really cool that you know is going on sports-wise if they're running across something. And I think that that's showing branding right there. What you're taking pictures of, what the common denominator is of your pictures, of your posts, you know, that is showing branding. So there is an infinite infinite amount of ways to uh, brand yourself <coughs> online and I think that's a pro that we have now that if you would have tried this you know five years ago it would not have been there um, I would just say the biggest peril is just people not really understand what personal branding is um, one of the things that I think and you guys are writing this down is that I would have a blog this is what your book you know so you need a professional blog of your portfolio okay because you know, one of the things about so you know, like social media is is those are tools and they're a way to find people and communicate with them. But at the end of the day, you know, I always uh, I didn't coin the term, but you know, I talk about digital sharecropping, and you have to make sure that you're not spending all your time on Facebook and Twitter and creating all this content. Um, but then when somebody Google's you, because that's just how the world works. Like I, I don't, you know, most people like I think 78 percent of uh, recruiters, according to the National Association of Human Resource. Uh, professionals Google people before they you know uh, hire them or interview them so if you spend all your time and you have maybe done some great work maybe you sent some great twit pics I mean no one can see them because they're you know it's hard to find it's the only thing about Facebook you ever notice like on here you know, it's just hard to find stuff so you need a personal portfolio it's got your resume it's got a video explaining who you are it's got you know some of your work then you need like a passion blog which is something it could be the cooking or maybe you don't cook but maybe she's found great ways to Get eat without cooking right <laughs> so that's a blog and so I would do that to show that you're passionate about something and I think one of the perils um, is that people don't understand what it is and they think it's just about the appearance and I think again that's just the painting on the wall so I think that's the biggest peril um, the other thing is just um, I think finding a way to communicate what you want to like for example um, like I don't know if anybody follows football, remembers that uh, the, uh, Oklahoma State lost the game last year um, against, was it Iowa State, right? But so I went online and I just said it like I see it in a way that's appropriate. And I just said if anybody thinks that the death of four players on a plane ride the morning before didn't affect that game, that game is just not being honest. I said that. So then people tweeted me back. I went to different events, you know, where I covered it. People were like, man, I really agreed with you. And that's what I mean. There's a fine line. You have to make sure you watch what you say. But at the same time, the thing that separates you, the thing that makes you great is the individual nature within each of you. And so you really have to be careful not to try to be, you know, like the Walmart. And that's what I think people think of Brandon. They think, okay, I want to be Walmart. I want to be Target. But Target is really, you kind of really want to be the boutique <coughs> store. You know what I mean? That has the specialized dress or the shoes that Diana would want to buy. Um, so I think those are the two biggest things. Um, and uh, those are the pros. I guess then the pros I think we stated. So. Okay. What, how many of you have Googled yourself in here? You haven't Googled yourself? Really? Would you like want us to Google you real quick? Okay. <laughs> I think Sounds that everyone, you know, should Google themselves. I mean, I probably Google myself, and this is bad, but on like a, you know, bi-monthly basis just to go and see. Uh, there are so many forums out there in right. every different city for like, oh my God, did you see what that morning Inger said or how many times she What's messed up? Or? Alexandra Corkton. I'm going to do a spelling on that, Alexandra. Is that right? I'm, um, we're going to request the spell it. R-K. Uh-oh, not you. M. <coughs> M. No, M is a Mary. A-S. Like that? Yes. And where are you from? I'm from Spring. So is this you? Spring. Is this you? I... My life. Now, that's something important. Not. Let's see. Are these any of your pictures? Yes. Let's go to the, go to the images. Let's just see. All right, you got a Baylor image. What is the first one that comes up? That's the, that's what that people you? are gonna see. That yes, ma'am. Oh um, my God, I did a dance dare too. That was my dance. <laughs> dance, dance I did dare. a dance dare and it got on Ellen, and I was yes, cool. I, so I did. tried to. 
I screamed for about a week. With my friend. That's awesome. <laughs> so, kind of go Is this you also? Yes, ma'am. So, That's do you have a LinkedIn page? <laughs> do you have a LinkedIn account? Um, no, I don't. So you really need, and while we're looking, because I'm just going to talk, you really need a LinkedIn profile. Your LinkedIn profile should not be an exact duplicate copy of your resume, because it's boring. You, what you can do is use it to engage people, to be interesting. Um, and that's what really should be part of your brand. But when you Google, when, if you do an internet search yourself, things about you should come to the top. If you Google and people can't find you, I mean, you really need to create the brand, and that's why if you have a personal blog that you're blogging about, the SEO is going to come up. You should have a LinkedIn account. Your Twitter should come up, and those are when we talk about building your your mm -hmm. online. Are you in track identity. and field? Is that you? I was I was in um, the Christian Academy's track okay, and field. Okay, so these so that's, that was my high school. Yeah, that's pretty mm -hmm. good. You're but the thing about it is we're talking about digital sharecropping. You don't control any of these entities. I'm really big about ownership because that's just how you get rich in America, right? Is mm -hmm. to own things. You, you can't get rid of get ahead renting, and we're renting here. What about videos? Any videos? She has the dance stair. Okay. If you go to the web, and then down was the dance stair. Oh no! Yeah, take Baylor off. So the other thing that you should all do is buy your own domain name, and you should own that property. Okay. And then when you need to learn how to manage it, Jay can help you with that. <laughs> Read my blog. Yeah, they did. They were like, they were like, this crazy. girl is crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> Can we pull yours up? Uh, um, I don't. It should be on there somewhere. But uh, they were like saying, I was a new to No one had any idea either. This wasn't with me. This is funny. I was gone for this one. <laughs> yeah. So like your oh, brand, fun. something could be like spunky, spontaneous. That um, is me. <laughs> you know, so, you know, like adventurous. Always, you know, looking for, you know, a new passion or thrill or something like that. Um, what is it, dance dear? Ellen's dance dear. Yeah, there we go. This is what we sent her. Okay, this is the one. We had no sound because we are a TV station and we couldn't like oh, use copyrighted yeah. music. <laughs> but this is the one that made it on her show. And uh, she used the clip of us, but we also Dan, went, this is Dan, my co-anchor. And these are the only people that I would, like, would dance with me. I go, I have, like, 50 That's to 80 Molly. people in this whole entire building, and no one else would trust me. How funny. Or bully. And this guy is Not always even Jane. Jane wouldn't dance with these things. No. So then this is our control room. That's Tim. Yeah, Tim. That's Rita. She's a creative. Our, yeah, creative services guy. And this is the guy who, like, punches commercial breaks. He's and, like, a director of Master Control. He's kind of boring. So he sits in this glass encased room all day. So we were like, let's just go dance behind him. How funny. Um, but you know, people would just, they were like, this girl's crazy. And then my boss was like, pulled up at the very last second and he says, uh, what's going on here? And I was like, oh well, you know, Ellen's a CBS affiliate and I was trying to sell it to him real quickly. I'm good on my feet. And I was like, you know, she's asked people to send her the stand stare. It's the newest craze. It's trending on Twitter. People are doing it constantly. I said, and if we could show people that we're doing it, we're just like everyone else. We're not submitting this video with any favoritism. We're just submitting it. And he was like, but it's not really going to be on Ellen. But then when we were on Ellen, what did they do? They played it in the 5, 6, and 10 o'clock news. They were proud. Of so they were extremely <laughs> proud. And sometimes, you know, I think they were a little fearful of my adventure, but um, it paid off in the long run. So. And it was tasteful. And it was tasteful. Yeah, we didn't do any, you know, real moves. We just did fun moves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyone else? Would anyone else, else like us to pull up their name? Uh-oh. Okay, Lloyd. Okay. Lloyd, we're pulling you up. Are you sure? Yeah, so you guys should get a blog. You can read mine, jfix.com. I write oh. about how to set up your own blog. Lloyd Weatherspoon. 
Because I think um, if you want to talk about Zara, something that yes. will make you stand out is to have some basic coding skills. Does anyone not know what their brand might be or have some trouble? I think that some advice when I was looking for my brand was I went to the people that, I was, that were really close to me, um, even in college, to my teachers and asked them, what are my strengths? You know, like if you had to describe me in three words, what would you say stands out about me to you? Um, and then I also just kind of looked at my, you know, the last book I read, the last movie I saw, the last thing, looking around my room, what my room was described as, and took all of that and kind of was able to say, okay, you know, six people said I was funky or, you know, spontaneous. So goofy fit with me. Um, everyone was like, you know, you've got a really big heart. You know, so mother was there. So I think just asking the people, if you're struggling with that, you know, you might not know right now where you know, your brand is, but asking people around you, we observe a lot of things about people. Um, I think Dr. Moody can agree that mm -hmm. you could probably describe everyone in your yes. classrooms, mm -hmm. and that can help you if you're struggling to find, you know, what your brand is. Great. That's a good point. Okay, so Lloyd, we, LinkedIn is the very first thing that comes up, so that's, that's Ooh, good. Oh, good picture, that's Lloyd. Really and good. LinkedIn has great uh, SEO, mm -hmm. so it, it generally is going to come up one through three. Yeah, it's, it's not like my resume was Status being, I'm not sure. Are you from Beaumont, Lloyd? I'm from Jasper. Jasper. You are? Mm -hmm. I went. I used to work in Beaumont, so I know exactly where Jasper is. Have you ever been to Jenny's Fried Chicken <laughs> in Deweyville? Yeah, yeah. They have the best fried chicken there. <laughs> <laughs> and his dad was actually a famous, a well-known coach in Jasper, so I guess this article is about. Who's your dad? Who is your dad? His same name, uh, Lloyd Witherspoon. Okay. My boyfriend's a sportscaster over there, so he might know. At Channel 6? No, at Channel 4. 4, okay. Who do you know at, at Channel 6? He's not with Channel 6 anymore. I think he's with the golf show. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> and your Facebook. I think uh, we're Facebook buddies, and usually what I see, uh, Lloyd posts very positive statements. You usually try to encourage people. Yeah. yeah really so I think your Facebook page is, is really good. Okay. Well, our last question is, um, is there any other advice that you haven't given yet? Any other advice about branding that you would like to offer our students today? Yeah, Jay. Um, I guess my advice is just be passionate. If you're trying to find an organization, you know, um, as a, um, when I came to Central Texas, I actually came to Jay for this, for, with help on how to, you know, uh, plant myself in a new community. If you transfer to Baylor, if you are new to this area, or going to take a job at a new place, it's really important to get to know, like, what you want to stand for. So, you know, um, although I'm a pet lover and, you know, I uh, believe in March of Dimes and I walk with, you know, Susan G. Komen every year, you know, um, the Advocacy Center, because I'm a mom, really stuck out to me. But, you know, all these, all these um, groups want someone to join. You know, they want the time. They want the people to volunteer. But it's really important to find what really sticks with you, something that you can take throughout any city that you might live in, throughout any um, job you might have, something common. So I would say, you know, finding an organization, that also helps make a brand. And that helps you network. And chances, nine times out of ten, you're going to be the only person in that group that does what you do and you'll automatically be the expert in your field. And so people will come to you whenever they need help with that certain thing. If my group needs to write a press release or needs to get something out immediately, they just send it to me. Hey, can you proofread this real quickly? And I mean, it's an immediate email, I get it, I look it over and I say, all looks good or make some changes. Um, and that's a way that you can feel like you're really accomplishing something with whether it's a you know, close group of eight people or a larger group of 50 people. Uh, chances are you're the only one that's gonna do what you're doing. Um, in that group? Um, I sent a tweet out, so I'm going to read you some of the advice. I asked my network um, what advice. I said, I'm going to speak to, uh, actually, I'll read my tweet to you. I asked um, my network uh, what advice they would give to aspiring communicators and journalists. Um, one of my friends, Teresa uh, Gorman, she is the former social media editor at NewsHour, um, and she currently works at uh, NPR Digital Services. Um, she says, um, be flexible and always have an open mind. Uh, Amanda Hill, who's actually a Baylor grad, she works at uh, Texas Farm Bureau. She said, good writing and AP style are paramount. Sounds simple, but so many young grads get the fundamentals wrong. 
But don't think if you don't know how to spell, you can't be in this business because I'm dyslexic and I'm a horrible speller and I'm in this business every day. So just, you know, I have apps. How would you say? I mean, like, there are words that come across sometimes my mind flips. So don't think because you're not good at something or because your mind sees numbers, you know, when they shouldn't be or, you know, inverts them, that you can't do this. Every day I read for two hours straight. And if I get the word wrong nine times out of ten, it's because I'm tired and I just haven't woken up yet. So um, I guess my my advice would would be is to to really just uh, hone in on like we said earlier on what you want to do and um, and then show people that you do that and and one of the things I just um, say is to tell people who you are not what you do so um, like one of the things we had talked about um, is that I'm a digital storyteller so I try to take cool pictures wherever I go I take it from a different angle and you know I'm I love Instagram for example and. You know, if, you know, I have an Instagram app that's not Instagram, and I read a blog every day about it. So it's like finding quirky ways to um, show who you are. And so I think, again, it's just about developing the relationship with people that you know so that when you need, you know, opportunities and, you know, people that know you, that you'll have those people that can vouch for you. Because you should really be able to find a job and know about that company before you apply to it, and that should be able to. And I pulled up Jade's um, Twitter page. <coughs> um, and we see we see that he is consistent. This looks similar to his Facebook page, so we see a lot of consistency with his branding. And that's this that's was uh, you were the, this, this was at the PRSA. Yeah. Uh, no, this one is. That was we did again about being professional. We uh, that's actually not mine. That's actually um, a Becca's brought us as they won an award. Uh, this one is actually at the PRSA with Social Media Crisis, which was great. They talked about the uh, um, Lynn Sanity situation. But if you go back to another page, again, about sharing, with, I'm on my way. Uh, you see your profile? Yeah, just one more back. Um, uh -oh. Okay. So basically what I just try to do is share people my journey. And so on that little deal, you'd see pictures of where I go, and I'll take okay, pictures, around the, <coughs> pictures around the station. And again, uh, you know, that's that Mario Armstrong. Um, and just make sure this is a funny picture. I got the girls because I follow the basketball girls, and they feel comfortable. So they just do crazy stuff. So we were down the field, they took this picture. Uh, this picture is actually, uh, I tweet and blog from the sidelines. You can always, if you ever want to find me, just find, look on the sidelines. And this is Smokey, if you listen to 1660. You know, he sent this picture. People pay attention to it. He's like, hey, could you got me in a better position? You know, <laughs> so he's leaning over talking to Ahmad Dixon. I tweeted that saying that, you know, he was talking about the defense. And so, you know, I think a lot of people know that I, you know, tweet those things out. I tweet quotes from the game, from the uh, press conference, and just try to get people an inside look into what's going on. Okay. Great. Well, you two have done a wonderful job here today. Do you all have any questions? Anything? Yeah, on your side. <laughs> KWTX cares and KWTX is on your side. But that can be taken in different ways. When I first came here, I thought that meant that we were hard hitting news journalists that were gonna go after your, you know, scumbag apartment, you know, managers that were keeping people out of, you know, a good day's work, you know, something like that. But uh, we're not that at all. We are we're on your side as in we're giving you the news that you know you want we're on your side with health stories we're on your side giving you news that matters why are we going to talk about a meat recall in pennsylvania we're not we're talking about things that are central texas things that are texas things that if you're traveling or you have family in this area will affect you and that's how we're on your side and we're caring uh we are probably the biggest uh, we have probably our hands in almost every single you know, March of Dimes, Susan G. Komen, any kind of uh, group in Central Texas, our hands are in in some shape or form. The toy drive. The toy the drive. We have uh, food for families. We're the biggest uh, canned food well, donation. Yeah, we um, are big brothers, big sisters. We are um, doing the philanthropy luncheon uh, next month. So we're in everything, and I think that shows that we're, we care. Um, I would say our brand is, and I agree with everything she said, I think we're what we've been able to do um, through social, through online, is that we're able to show people that we're individuals that live in this community that tell stories that people are important, that are important to people. 
And I think we're, we're able to do that. And <clears throat> I think people respond. Um, I think if you look at our social media community, um, one of the things that we'll do is like on Thanksgiving Day, we'll show a picture of all of our staff there. And it's just a, what we've been able to do is humanize our brand and let people know that we're human beings. And people say, wow, thanks to you guys, you know, because they're home eating turkey. And we have, you know, 12 or 15 people back at the station. So I think um, what we are is we are very good um, at delivering people the stories in the, in the delivery format they want, whether it's online or streaming it or on one of our apps. And um, I think the things that we do really well is that I think we have an understanding um, of um, what's important in this community and we deliver it to people. I think that, like Jay said, we probably, I think, are the most personal with our viewers. Right. Um, we, I mean, I probably put a lot of my updates as public on Facebook just so that if people subscribe to me, they know what's going on in my life and not just like in my work life. I'm um, Julie, just Julie Hayes, she's our main anchor. She just found out today she's having a boy. She posted it not only on her personal page, but on her work page. Um, you know, when certain other anchors in the market do that, you know, I'm unsure. The day they figured out, who knows? I think we're really personal and we tell people what's going on. You know, Al, um, Brady, my morning, you know, I just, he chokes like every morning right now because he's suffering with ragweed. Anyone else have ragweed issues in here? Well, he's like, <clears throat> this morning, sorry guys, I have rat, you know, I'm suffering from that ragweed. He tells you, he's not just choking up on here or losing his uh, voice. So we're real personal with everyone. I found y'all this page here that's on your side and it has links to food for families, toys yeah. for tots, adopt a unit. Um, yeah. So that, that shows friends. how you're really in, in the community. So that. It's a good illustration of what you guys were just talking about. I also noticed that you have a KWTX newsletter um, that people can sign up for. How often is that newsletter? Every day. Every day. It goes out every morning at 5.50 a.m. So that's, that's, that's in my department. Yeah. That's great. Any other questions? Okay. What do you, I just want to know, like, what's some of your, what's, what do you want to do eventually? Um, I'm kind of in the track of Jay here. I, I study film and digital media, but I'm just interested in all the new technologies that are coming out. There's a, a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Brubberman? I study uh, music entertainment marketing. They'll actually know my dad, Larry Brown. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's you? He told me you were coming. What? You're Larry? You, yeah, 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 you're Larry. Yeah. What? Larry's our in, he's uh, just so us. Larry Brown is our station engineer. He is super bad. He can pretty much fix, engineer anything in the building, and basically it keeps us on the air. He also had a stint here at Baylor when uh, Baylor had the TV station, and they went back to his ten. And uh, yeah, he's 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 great. That makes me laugh. He is. He's very funny. Great. <laughs> he's very funny. Anyone else like to share? Uh, PR major. But I'm not sure what type I'm going to go into for sure. Yeah. It's, it's a big field. It's a little overwhelming at times. Yeah, it is. I'm not going to do it. Back in the back. Um, I'm not sure.